Hello, thanks for clicking. That thumbnail took me ages. Uh, I'm going to show you how to turn this into something a bit like this for someone like this for not much of this. But first, let's have a minute musical montage. Roll VT. Right, that's enough of that rubbish. You're not here to see that. You're here to see a kayak build. So uh, let's get on with it. Uh, a couple of years back, I made a 16-foot foam kayak, um, designed it myself, and fiberglassed it. Uh, while it was ugly as sin, it actually worked. I've had a lot of really fun trips with that. And um, I had some leftover foam. I thought I'd make, uh, I'd make a kayak for my daughter, who's now eight. So uh, I looked at what I had, figured out I probably needed another board, went out, splashed out an entire 32 bucks, to buy another board and uh, started sketching out my new plan um, to try and make sure that I wasn't wasting as much as possible I was trying to fit everything together I came up with this little design uh, each square on the uh, squared paper represents a 4x4 grid so the next step was just to transfer that to the foam boards and uh, cut it out so you're going to need some of this this is uh, blue chalk and that's a little stringy thing I don't know what it's called Power winder from Stanley. Right, so this is me uh, using the thing I didn't know the name of, which is called a chalk line, obviously, because it makes chalk lines uh, just to make a grid. On the first one, I didn't bother. Uh, on the second one, I did. I marked it out. Um, first, I had to square it off because, like I said, these are leftovers. Then, marked out four inch spacers on the top. And then the bottom, just to make my my long lines, and get my uh, chalk line out. Very easy. Really into covering chalk. Then you just snap it, and it leaves a mark. Repeat that. Put your ass in front of the camera. Easy peasy. Once I've done it one way, I did it the other way. So I got myself a four by four grid. Um, the great thing about this stuff is it, it just rubs off. If you want to get rid of it, you just brush it off. Then I made a little template to mark out the curves. I've seen a lot of people building these kind of kayaks with what looks like an endless supply of foam, but it costs, here in Canada at least, it's like 80 bucks a sheet. So I was trying to make my plan as economical as possible to try and fit it all on the same sheet as much as possible. The closer your curves match, the less shaping you'll have to do later on. Um, it's just time consuming and messy. So I made another little template just out of a scrap bit of uh, styrofoam. So you could go with something like that, but I'm gonna try this. See if that melts its way better than this, chews it up. Most important thing when you're building a kayak like this is um, you need a cup of tea once in a while. All right, so. Matt Gar, aka Matthew, who's a pilot. Yes, you should use a hot knife, which is a good idea. So that's why I'm using it, because you told me to. It'll probably cut this a lot better. Um, right, let's get back on with it. Is 
has left me comments recently. M Langford, um, he's building, he's got a channel with loads of uh, little videos of him building some boats, teardrop trailers, he does the poor man's fiberglass. He's going to do another one of these kind of kayaks shortly, so maybe watch that one. Uh, who else? Uh, loads of you, Rob Knott, Jason Nye, Paul Sawyer, Samuel Bambridge, John Messersmith, Annie Manawa, Rodney Morgan, David Bradley, Hedge Fund, Ronald Harris, concerned about the expense, don't worry Ronald, I've got it covered, it's cheaper than buying one. Anyway, thanks to all of you that leave comments, it's encouraging. So I've messed up uh, this bit here. Um, so if you look at the plan, it doesn't look like that. So um, there's two ways I can fix that because basically one side, this this side here is is one square longer, which is four inches, than those sides. So one thing I could do is just cut a square out, but then there'll be a join, and I really wanted this to be a solid piece. That's one way of fixing it, or I can just re-carve this out. This is only, I don't know, less than a centimetre deep, half an inch deep. So that's probably the better fix, because I prefer this to be a solid piece with no joins in. So that's what I'm going to do. So I guess the moral of the story there is measure twice, cut once. Not measure once, cut once to try and make a nice picture you can use in the thumbnail. So this is basically just going to be a little bit of a mark across there and a bit of a mark across there and that's that I can fill with something um, that's better than taking a square out which is the other way I could have fixed this. Right, I've remembered to set an angle on it this time. Mistake number two. 